Alrighty then, it's time for a Jungle Olaf game. Let's get this show on the road. Which one? Yeah, Olaf has basically made a comeback, mostly due to several factors. One, some of the keystones are ridiculously good on him, aka Predator, and he's a soft counter to some of the more used junglers right now. You know, if you see something like a Volivare or someone like a, well, Skarner in this case, he soft counters them. And remember, there's a difference between hard counter and soft counter. Hard counter is like, just destroys everything about them. And soft counter is basically just saying like you're resistant to them. And either and in this case, I'm taking the predator rune. Because right now, one of the cool things about Olaf, jungle or lane, more so in the jungle, he has, he can take a whole lot of different keystones and work in different ways. In this game, I'm going the predator build which essentially means, well, taking obviously the Predator Keystone, taking things like Righteous Glory and Dead Man's Plate, and if you really wanted to get overkill with it, Ghost, but that's a little bit too much. So, the entire idea behind this build is to just run at somebody, somebody like the, the carry, the marksman, and destroy them. You'll see that happen several times in this game, and it really does help that they have someone like Nami who's supposed to protect him. And, you know, you can't really do that against Olaf. Other builds with him, now one, one that's come out is taking the Conqueror build and, you know, going Titanic Hydro and just hitting things real hard, taking Press the Attack, that kind of stuff. And another one I had seen was taking a massive cooldown reduction build using uh, that Summoner spell one, I forgot what one it's called, and just kind of spamming your abilities, being your Hydra, your Frozen Heart, rushing a Frozen Heart and then Righteous Glory and just, you know, spamming your E. This one works similar in that kind of fashion sort of build, but no. Either way, then once I got my boots, just immediately clicked out with my ultimate, nothing could CC me down, and I just run at whoever I've got a kill, and then just, you know, beat them to death slowly. Early on, your damage isn't that great as Olaf, but, you know, against someone like Jin, you're Against someone like Jin, who is really low health and overcommitting, you pretty easy to kill him. And also, you got to kill against Tsunami too. But now, as I said, progressively as the game goes on, this build becomes stronger and stronger as you get more mobility and more cooldown. Because, um, contrary to the other builds, this one's auto t is not going to be very strong with auto attacks. You're going to be having to land your Q and using your E to the maximum effect. Either way, here I invade red and. You know, I guess I end up turning around because LeBlanc shows up and I we kill the Zed and then I get killed so the Renekton gets a double buffs. Thankfully it ends up just being a one for one. You get a little bit too uh, greedy there with the Red Steel. I should have just kind of backed off right a long time ago or should I not have even gone for it. But yeah, um, like, uh, as I was saying, you got to rely on cooldown reduction in this uh, with this build to do damage. Cinder Hulk and cooldown reduction trying to use your E and your Q as much as possible. So if I don't, if I miss my Q, that's a huge amount of my damage gone. If I throw it too far, throw it too close, yeah, there you go. Oh wait, same thing as before. Pop everything, no matter whatever they do, you saw that. Just Scar Scarner can't see, see me, the ultimate from Nami couldn't do anything. Jin dies. And when Jin dies, it's, you know, the most important character in the enemy team for, you know, sustained damage in, like, in the mid, uh, during team fights. Uh, when he dies, though, of course, Jin is burst. When he dies, the rest of them are easy pickings, especially if we've got more assassinate champions or, you know, a strong marksman of our own. So consider that. And like I already alluded to, it's going to be kind of a repeat because the enemy team composition is not made to deal with Olaf. They kind of walked into this uh, into this counter pick. Again, a soft counter to the Skarner, kind of a huge counter to their team. Because their team has not a, doesn't have a lot of sustained damage, so once Jin gets cropped out or destroyed, they just gonna fall apart. Either way, aside from that, this game is so far pretty even. A lot of our kills are focused on the Blanc. The farm is pretty much the same across the lanes. And here's the same thing, you know, I go in against a Nami, she pops her ultimate. What is she gonna do? Absolutely nothing. I uh, I always, historically, Olaf's been one of my champions to go when a, a CC heavy meta come, becomes a thing. Although, I got encouraged to play him more when I saw the Predator build being used in uh, LCS, because that shit was awesome to see. And, you know, same thing here. Pop the, pop, pop the angry boots, just run in there. I don't have my ultimate to activate, so I just have to, you know, kind of brute force it. But thanks to that mobility, I'm able just to, you know, catch up to people. And that's always been one of Olaf's biggest weakness. That without Ghost or without, well, Flash, I guess, or having a ri early Righteous Glory or Shirelia's Reverie when that existed, 
you really couldn't do very much to a lot of champions. It got worse and worse as everyone got dashes and whatnot. But now that you have Predator, and that buying Righteous Glory is a lot easier, and, you know, just in general, just Predators making a huge goddamn difference. For at least this build. Now, the other builds, like the Conqueror one, I guess, that one's cropping up and you're using this scene in this patch, the, uh the press the attack one and, and the summoner spell one those do work in different ways and you don't have that super ridiculous kind of ganking thing because to be honest the predator build is pretty uh risky because if you run at certain characters or certain people you just kind of you know die so you kind of have to hope that it's it's better when the enemy team composition doesn't have overwhelming amounts of damage and kiting so you don't you know just go through a grinder and get killed we're trying to be a madman so in those other cases, on in those other, um, oh yeah, I also forgot he's got that sorcerer's build too. But that one's mostly for the lane. In the jungle, it's not as effective. Arcane Comet, there we go. Arcane Comet build is uh, is more for the lane than it is for the jungle. Anyways, uh, the other builds allow you to actually you know fight more, you know, slug it out with people and be tankier and, and less risky. But those aren't as fun to play, so I'll play this one. So yeah. Look at my build right now. Yeah, I got the boots with uh, with the angry with the angry predator. I got the Cinder Hulk, Righteous Glory, and I'm building Dead Man's Plate. And you just see me zooming around, you know, just chuck axes, and if somebody's in out of position, I run in there. And I, and again, most of my damage is going to be coming in from my Qs, which, if you if you're taking into consideration, uh, or you can see when I hit a Renekton. They don't do a lot of damage to characters who are in squishy or if I can't chain them. So keep that in mind if you play it. You're not going to be really strong against other tanks unless you're hitting them with your E. By the way, run at the Nami. She's super scarce. So she has to burn basically a lot of things to try to escape. And it just forces her to leave. In this case, I flash over the wall because I thought I'd, I'd be needed more to fight. But nah, the, the Twitch kind of just obliterated them. So yeah. This is one of those games where you can see that the enemy team composition or the enemy in general isn't going to be able to do very much against me or in my LeBlanc teammates. So they just kind of slowly get crushed. And a lot of it really is due to just kind of the composition. Because one of the things that's revealed during Champion Select and you know also prior to that. Or I mean Champion Select and then a little bit after the game started. Is that both my bottom laners were auto or uh, auto procured. Uh, the Soraka was begging for the jungle roll and the Twitch was saying, oh, I'm going to feed. I don't know how to play AD carry. But they're doing fine enough. So that kind of, but it still kind of means that the rest of us had to carry a lot of, uh, a lot more effort or, I mean, put more effort in and, you know, do something. And the LeBlanc dominating her lane and me just kind of being a, a soft counter to Skarner and being a hard counter to their team or mostly hard counter to their team was a big deal. You gotta love this, by the way. A activate Angry Boots, activate Righteous Glory, run at the Nami, there's no CC in me, and I just destroy her. It's just poor Nami. She can't do anything, and no one can help her. Uh, but again, that's what makes this build funny to look at. It makes it real, and funny to use. Like, uh, I've been, this is, I've, this is my first Olaf game in a while. I've been playing them every now and then. Just the kind of issue is that, um, this build, like I said, is kind of a gamble and your damage isn't all that great aside from killing, you know, specific targets or one target. But it's, you know, it's worthwhile in that sense if you wipe out someone important. So in those situations where my team isn't, you know, carrying the momentum that I'm trying to give them or, you know, or they're lacking behind. It tends to hurt you. This build on a sort of if you're from if you're behind isn't very useful because, like I mentioned, if you run in there, you'll probably just get killed in some in, in, against some compositions or you know in certain if you're behind. And as a result, in those games that I played as Olaf, my damage tapers off and I can't really you know do very much anymore. If I wanted to bust out more damage as the Olaf in this case, I would need to consider buying a Titanic Hydra or, you know, Maul Memorius or something like that. But either way, I get killed here, so. Yeah, it, th yeah, this video is less talking about the game and more talking about this build and the fact that, you know, right now Olaf is a pretty strong pick, especially considering who's popular. And if you learn all his little builds and, you know, the little nuances to them, you can, you can come out with a pretty strong character. Either way, now most now as you can see, this game's kind of fallen apart for the enemy team, and it's just kind of a systematic breakdown of well the game. Anyhow, as you can see, 
they just can't land any kind of uh, comprehensive team fight, and they're just gonna getting picked off. And also, this entire scene is funny because they, Zed can't do any damage, and for some reason, he decides to blink back into his death, and you know, for no reason. So he gets killed. The rest of the enemy team is just kind of now hunkered down in their base. We only only re really killed one person though. By the way. Go down bottom lane, just try to push it. They're all kind of just, you know, clustered in. Use the angry boots, go back in there. Actually, don't really achieve very much here. Just kind of poking at them. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know, a done deal. The LeBlanc kind of absolutely dominated them, and, you know, I'm going to make sure their only important character, or their most important character stays dead. I mean, the Twitch 774, and he is, you know, a, a definite threat, but... Even if he dies, my team comp ha or my team has a lot of things we can do. Although in this little situation here, things kind of turn on us because our LeBlanc kind of got a little bit too uh, too uh, risky with a kill and died for it. And we don't turn out completely terribly. You know, we just we uh, we kill somebody, we lose two, and we get a dragon. But you know, it was just we're still way too ahead for them to kind of bounce back from this. I get the blue dragon. You know, we're gonna there's gonna be a weird little fight down top. I mean, up top lane, down top lane. What the hell's that? And you know, just, just once uh, Twitch got himself killed because he was split pushing. But you know, again, angry boots time. Run in there, just catch the Scarner and destroy him along with the LeBlanc. And the enemy team is forced to back off. And me and the Ilalalawi, I can't really always say her name, are able just to, you know, get barren by ourselves eventually, you know, Soraka joins the fray to get it for us or help us, you know, through it. And this is basically a death toll for the enemy team. You know, we're already kind of split pushing them, you know, uh, well, we're kind of pushing them on all sides. But then having Baron is going to just, you know, make this just a million times worse for them. Here, I'm going to catch the Nami and not really overcommit to it, just do quite a bit of damage to her, you know, just my forcer used that plan to escape, steal the red buff, my teammates are, you know, it's a bon in, uh, they're in bottom lane. Again, it's just a very extreme situation for them. I even have Warmog's armor at this point, which just makes me nearly unkillable. And I was just laugh at this part where, like, no, Zed, you are going to die. Chase after him and just blow him up. Yeah, it's, I just wanted to make sure he died because, you know, take out, just sort of make it a, a, a guaranteed death. Take out the Zed and take out somebody else and they can't resist this push, which is gonna, you know, was already gonna do enough damage to them, but this is like to guarantee the final nail in the coffin. So, Jin gets killed with a Twitch, Renekton tries his very best, but it's, you know, definitely, you know, lost cause. And, you know, it takes quite a while to actually bring him down, but that's sort of what I mean where, you know, Olaf, even with this build, just doesn't have enough damage inside of his explosive on his E and using your Q on squishier targets, but whatever. I digress. Hopefully this encourages you to play him because he's really, really fun and I'm definitely enjoying it. And I may upload more Olaf games with different builds so you can see them all in action. And if you liked this video, remember to give it a like. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure to hit the little bell up there somewhere so you actually get notifications to my videos because YouTube and stuff.